Welcome to Electron Online. Now the following problem will be done in three parts because we're going to take three paths. The curve will go from the point 1, 1 to the point 4, 2. First via parabola defined right here, x equals y squared. The second time we're going to take a curve defined by the parametric variable t where x equals 2t squared plus t plus 1 and y equals 1 plus t squared along this path right here. And the third path will follow the two straight lines where y equals 1 from here to here and x equals 4 from there to there. So we're going to do this very same problem in three different ways. So this is a good way again to get a good feel of how to do line integrals using vector fields. We're going to evaluate the work done. The, the force vector is defined as follows, x plus y in the i direction and y minus x in the j direction. And of course our position vector in general is always going to be x in the i direction plus y in the j direction. And we take the derivative of that, we get dx in the i direction plus dy in the j direction. So now let's go ahead and plug in what we know. So we're going to find the work done, which is equal to the the um, integral the, over the curve of the force vector. Now we're going to write this in terms of x and y. And we're going to dot that with the derivative of the position vector. Now notice we have the force vector here in terms of x and y, but that would make it hard to integrate. And we do have a relationship between x and y. In other words, we can say that y is equal to the square root of x. And that is, of course, for case number one, where we can use the parabola. So what we're going to do here is instead of writing the force in terms of x and y the way we have it defined here, since our, our position vector and the derivative position vector has a dx here and a dy there, I kind of want to think ahead and realize that maybe this should only be expressed in terms of x and this should only be expressed in terms of y via the relationship here where y is equal to the square root of x. So let's do that. Let's plug that in and see what we get. So the force vector in terms of x and y could be written like this instead. So y cannot be replaced by the square root of x. So we get x plus x to the one half power in the i direction plus y minus and instead of x we're going to write y squared in the j direction. So if we're going to use our vector field expressed like that then it becomes a lot easier to integrate. So now to find the work done this is going to be equal to the integral and we're going to plug in the limits later because we're going to break it up into two separate integrals but first we're going to take what we have there so we're going to take the force vector, which is written like that. So we have x plus x to the one-half power in the i direction plus y minus y squared in the j direction. And we're going to multiply that via the dot product times the derivative of the position vector right here, which is dx in the i direction plus dy in the j direction. So here, you're beginning to feel why we're doing this. Now, when we now multiply these two together, we get two separate integrals because we're going to get something in terms of the dx and something in terms of the dy. So this becomes the following. The work then is equal to the integral from 1 to 4 because in the x direction, we change from x equal 1 to x equals 4. And so that would be equal to uh, the quantity x plus x to the 1 half power times dx. Notice how the unit vectors disappear when we do the dot product. And then we have plus the integral of y minus y squared multiplied times dy. Now the limits of integration for y, notice we go from 1, 1 to 4, 2. So y goes changes from 1 to 2. So the limits for y will be from 1 to 2. And so now we're ready to go ahead and integrate both of those integrals. When we do, we get the following. The work done is equal to x squared divided by 2 plus x to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, evaluated from 1 to 4. And then here we get plus y squared over 2 
minus y cubed over 3 evaluated from 1 to 2. So now we have to go ahead and work these out. There will be a little bit of arithmetic involved with that. Plug in the upper limit, we get 16 divided by 2, which is 8. Here we get the square root of 4, which is 2 cubed, that's 8 times 2 thirds, so that's plus 2 thirds times 8. Now we plug in the lower limit, so we subtract minus 1 half. And here, plug in the lower limit, we subtract minus 2 thirds. Our second integral, plug in the upper limit, we get 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And here, we get a divided by 3, but we have a minus here, so that's minus 8 over 3. Plug in the lower limit here, we get minus 1 half. And here we get minus a third, but with the negative becomes a plus 1 third. All right, now we have to add all those up, hopefully correctly. So this is equal to, now we have an 8 plus 2 is 10, and minus 2 halves, that would be 9. So we get a 9, that takes care of the 8, the 1 half, and the 1 half right there. So next, what do we have? We have 16 thirds, that would be plus 16 thirds, that takes care of this one. And here, minus 2 thirds, takes care of that one. And, oh, we took care of the plus 2 already. Minus 8 thirds, takes care of that one, and plus 1 third. So we have 16 minus 8, that's 8, minus 2, that's 6, plus 1 is 7, so this equals 9 plus 7 thirds. So this is equal to 9 plus 2, that's 11, and a third, which can also be written as 11 and a third as a mixed number. So there we go, that would be the work done as defined by this vector field and moving through it from 1, 1 to 4, 2 along path number 1. That's defined by this parabola. In the next two videos, we'll do this problem again, but we'll follow path number two and path number three to see how much work is done along those two paths. But that's in essence some good examples of how to find the work done using what we call line integrals and vector fields. And that's how it's done.